Hi, I'm Greg Hughes from Vans Aircraft. We're here at the Sandy River Airport in uh, Oregon on a beautiful summer day with the RV-14A. The RV-14 and 14A have undergone some changes recently, especially related to the power plant, but we thought we'd give everybody an opportunity to find out what the RV-14 line is all about. Uh, tell you a little bit about the airplane and then also tell you about some of the changes that we've done from a performance perspective. The idea here was we wanted to have an airplane um, that would be quick and easy to build. So it uses all the most modern technology, the most modern plans, uh, the most modern final sized match hole parts. Um, and it goes together really, really quickly. We have people that have finished RV-14s and 14As in less than a year. Um, and that's, that's pretty amazing. But having, having that level of fit and finish on the kit is what, what allows that to happen. So, so I kind of think of the RV-14 as, and the 14A as the, um, if we're talking about the Escalade or the, or, or the, uh, the Camaro or the Mustang, then this is kind of like the F-150 Raptor, right? I mean, this is like, it's a truck, but it's a sports car, but it's a truck, but it's a sports car, really a muscle car. Um, and with some of the new changes, uh, it's really beefed up and, and the performance is just really, really amazing. One of the key benefits of the 14 is that it's a fully aerobatic plus six minus 3G airplane. Uh, like the 7 and the 6 before it. But what it does, though, is it allows a lot more room between your shoulders, shoulder to the side of the cockpit. Um, it's, it's just a bigger airplane. It, it climbs like crazy. It flies like crazy. It's a fast airplane. It lands really, really slow and gets off really, really short. So that total performance envelope that we talk about when we're talking about RVs is, is definitely uh, part of what you get with an RV-14. The, uh, the airplane's been around uh, for several years now, and it's uh, proven to be very popular. The 14 and the 10 are the two airplanes that are currently our hottest selling kits, uh, with you know the seven and the eight really close behind, uh, and the nine. Uh, but it's it's uh, it's proven to be a really good, tough, uh, really great cross country airplane. A lot of people like to build it as an IFR platform. Uh, this particular model is a VFR platform, and uh, so we have a, a dine in sky view, HDX system in here, two screens. Uh, a really great VFR platform. It's a two-axis autopilot, and uh, it, you know, really great for cross country, great for cruising around. The cabin is significantly wider, uh, longer, uh, and the rails on the side, relative to the RV7, all of this relative to the RV7, um, are lower. This is available as a tip-up canopy, but not available as a slider, right? And the reason for that has to do with the way the rails are designed. It has to do with a lot of the different decisions that went into. Uh, the buildability and the specific design of the fuselage and, and how it goes together. Uh, but uh, it's a, uh, a very comfortable, very roomy airplane with a great big baggage compartment in it. Um, really great useful load and, and just fast. Uh, you want to get in and out of short strips, this airplane definitely gets in and out of short strips. It's a, and it's a fun, fun airplane to fly. You want to do loops and rolls? Do loops and rolls. But the big news today about this airplane is some of the changes that we introduced recently, so we'll go around to the front and we can talk about that. This one has the new Lycoming IO390 EXP119 engine, which is a 215 uh, minimum horsepower uh, engine. It, it really actually dynos a little bit higher than that, uh, but the, the, the base guarantee is 215. Um, and it includes a different, a new fuel servo, much larger fuel servo from Airflow Performance, as well as a exhaust system on it that is was custom designed and tuned. So it's fuel servo, exhaust, engine, cowling, airframe design all together, very intentionally. Really, this is the first time that we've really intentionally dove deep into doing that with Lycoming Airflow Performance in this case, in order to come up with a system where we're gonna eke out every little bit of horsepower out that's available from the engine. Um, as opposed to sort of doing what might generally be considered a little bit more generic install. And that's been really, really successful. Up till now, the RV-8, and it still is barely, has been the fastest airplane in the fleet. This airplane is now more than 10 miles an hour faster than the 390A engine is, uh, and allows it to get really, really close to where the RV-8 flies in terms of speed. So we're talking top speed here, about 216 miles an hour, whereas the RV-8 is probably gonna hit about 220 typically configured. From the outside, there's a couple changes that you can see. The main one that's visible that you can see is that it has these bumps down here now. So instead of having a center exit ramp with a square on it, these bumps here are where the exhaust 
uh, is, is actually riding. And then back here, you can see this, it's open right now. Uh, we kind of call it a cow flap, but really what it is is a ramp flap because it's not in the cow. So the ramp is closed off, but has a variable exit area that you can open for cooling purposes and climb. So the 390 and the 390C engine is a pretty hot running engine, right? Uh, oil squirters uh, pick up a lot of heat, so we really need to cool that. So one of the changes that we made was we, uh, with this tuned exhaust, was that we were changed the, the cowling exit area and we're able to, uh, to add the ramp. Another change that we made uh, that's under the hood that you can't see is that we actually increased the oil cooler, uh, baffled duct to oil cooler assembly. It's the same oil cooler, but we've gone from a four inch uh, scat tube to a five inch tube and opening in the rear baffle. Uh, we, we are now pushing as much air through that cooler as it is capable of allowing through the cooler. So we've maximized that airflow through the cooler. Not only are we making more power with this engine and more horsepower and taking advantage of it by tuning the exhaust and whatnot to be able to get all that horsepower out of it, it's also a lighter engine, right? So a uh, uh, billet oil pump, uh, cold air induction, magne magnesium sump, uh, and taking the accessory uh, pad and all the mechanisms, the gears and whatnot, off the back of the engine and putting a blank on there. And all that takes, give or take, around 10 pounds, 9, 10 pounds off the engine, you know, which is a pretty meaningful weight reduction on, on the nose of the airplane, especially when you combine it with the extra power that we get out of the engine. The airplane, configured with the new engine, takes off faster, uh, takes off shorter, climbs faster, a couple, you know, up to a couple few hundred feet per minute more. Um, you know, we've been flying it the last couple of days. We're seeing climb rates that are, you know, pushing 2,000 feet per minute with a couple of people and a lot of fuel in the airplane, and that's pretty impressive on a hot day. Uh, and just in general, uh, it's just a higher performing airplane. We're excited about the idea of bringing enhancements and changes to airplanes that are already available, and we've done that with the 14, uh, 14A here, and uh, we're looking forward to not only developing new airplanes in the future, but also you know, developing enhancements and uh, improvements to our existing fleet where it makes sense and bringing those to you so that you can get them up in the air and have fun with them in the sky. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you want more information about the RV-14, you can go to vansaircraft.com slash RV-14 uh, or check us out on kit planes, some great articles on kit planes and, uh, and a variety of different places that you can get information or just give us a call. More than happy to talk.